This is Patricio back from more Space Kim with more the machine. I hate this one. We're going to try to create this humongous ruby crystal in this laser. Right here. And the fact that it's a super bonder and a sensor together is it inputs up here. I mean, it's frightening. But what's even more frightening is this thing. That's now completed. Yes, it is. And what happens is it creates the actual trigger mechanism. Now get this. You have to time it so that you'll kick out the ruby crystal and then it will fire again at some later time and if you do not use your control systems right here you're going to have atoms smashing into each other as you create the other ruby crystal while there's a ruby crystal already in there yeah so how am I going to do this? I'm going to be taking the aluminum oxide and doing just one bonded aluminum and oxygen and, and for the chromite just take the CR the chromium in the second reactor I'm going to build half of the aluminum crystal while kicking off for the chromium later on and here I'll actually put the three pieces half the ruby crystal of the aluminum oxide and the other half of the aluminum oxide combination and the chromium in the middle and after that I'll hit something maybe or maybe I'll let it fire and then I hit something that will go ahead and create the next ruby crystal or put it into waiting mode multiple minutes later and a whole lot of hair pulling here's my first reactor my basic idea was to bring it down here to where the recycler will be. Um, take just what I need, and what I don't need is just going to be kicked out of the recycler. Uh, the red will handle the aluminum oxide, and there's some things that I want to show you when that is run. While uh, the blue will handle the chromite. Now, with this monstrosity, I want you to notice that after it unbounds, it will grab this part of the aluminum oxide and then after it drops off and kicks out these two oxides um, but this one right here will stay because this aluminum is still bounded to this oxygen which is outside of the output area so we'll come down grab that part and drop that off so there goes the two oxygens down to the recycler and then picks up the other one out and do for another run and the chromite takes a more longer period of time to there a red drops it off and blue comes up to grab it do two unbounds and then grab just the chromite get it out and send everything else to the recycler that's it Here I have my middle reactor, and I'm kind of happy uh, how compact I got this. What I have done was I took in blue, it moves this up and keeps rotating up. Seeing it nearly hitting the top is kind of heart attack inducing instead of headache inducing, but after it gets that done with red counting off, red sends it over, drops it off, and if it's a chromite, blue just sends it along. So to demonstrate, okay, there's the first piece, and nothing to bond with yet, but in red is just keeping up the count. Yeah, it's still there. It's okay. It's all right. Now for the next piece, and that will complete the first half. A half. Yeah. And 
off it goes again. And the chromite, like I said, is pretty. I think the next one's a chromite. Chromium, excuse me. Yep, there we go. And that just passed along. I have now created a solution for this. I have actually thought of a possible other way to do it, but let me show you the annoying way first. What red does is come down here, drop off at one half, tells blue to come down and drop off his chromite, and then red will come down and drop the other half, and then it will keep going around and around and around and around until the thing fires, and then you can use control A to send off to do another run. If you don't do this, atoms will smash together. Now let me go ahead and show you this multiple ways. Because this is like, again, the tedious way. So here comes the first one. You can see it already fired once. Yeah, I do not like working with such big compounds. Blue is still working on his chromite being delivered. Uh, come on, where is it? There it is. It's the first chromite. Okay. Now it's about to arrive. So there's a chromite. Red continues on. Grabs the other piece. Ugh. And then we just have to wait for it to fire. And red continues going around. Until it does. This is going in very slow motion. Which is why it's so annoying. And once it fires... I'm going to go ahead and wait for this thing to. And you can see the red one right there. I hit control A. And now goes up and do another round. If I do not do that, if I leave, say, Control A on in this case, we're going to get this result. Yeah. Which is why you need that in there. But now I'm going to try a different way, maybe something that's be a little bit more sane. Here I have what I consider to be a more sane solution to our little problem. Instead of trying to time a control to say, okay, it's been kicked out, do another, this sensor can do that for us. There'll be a aluminum here when it's setting down, uh, and then after it fires, it's gone, so let's keep moving then, and otherwise, it'll just keep moving around and around, and in a lot tighter format, so it'll be a little bit quicker, too. So let me quickly uh, show that, how that works. <coughs> Still gotta wait a good long time though. So this is yeah, this is the exact same thing as before. But as you can see, the loom is there, and now it's going around and madly in circles until it fires outward. So let me redo this at top speed so you can actually see what's going on. Yeah, it misses sometimes. Nothing you can do about that, I don't think. If there is a way you can do that, do not tell me my head won't be able to take it. <laughs> uh, I think it got up to this puzzle. I haven't completed that one, if I remember right. But the blue... Danube, you get to do flip-flopping, as though your head hasn't done enough flip-flops itself. And there's a story. Now this puzzle should look awfully familiar, but I'll do that later because I need to go to bed. My poor head. I'll be back later for more Space Kim. This is Patricio saying goodbye. Ugh.